Hi everyone, I thought I would make a video today in response to a question that I get asked quite a lot about practice routines and how often you should practice, how often do I practice, what do I practice. Um, so we'll go into that in just a moment, but just briefly I did use a different pedal today, you might have heard, I'm quite enthused about it, can't remember the name of it, it's got a penguin on the front by GHS Pedals, um, and it's a pitch shifting vibrato. I usually use my Strymon Flint when I want kind of movement, but I'm a huge fan of Madison Cunningham, as you know. So she started her career with this sound, this kind of sound. shifting vibrato thing. You probably hate it, I like it. Anyway, let's get into the video. Right, so first of all we've swapped guitars because the last one was down a semitone and is wearing flat ones. Anyway, I got an email the other day, right, from a chap called Dustin Cook, no relation, from Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. That's the home of Uncle Larry, is it not? Um, so his, the main question was, I was wondering if you could give me some tips on practicing, i.e. what to practice, how long to practice certain things, should I practice one thing one day, something else the next. And he mentions he's 
he likes uh, the old school guys like I do, Martin Offler and Gary Moore and things like that. And so in my reply, I just kind of brainstormed how I felt about the question and out came this response. So I'm just kind of going to go through my email, but I'll come in with my guitar at certain points to elaborate what, what I was trying to get across. So I started going back by saying I don't have a particular structured routine. I do not practice one hour one day or scales one day and chords the next or no, it's all just, it's fun, man. It's just, guitar's always just been fun for me. Um, and e even the YouTube channel, I didn't plan on having a YouTube channel. I just wanted to, I missed, I think I missed people saying I was good. <laughs> That's the truth of it. I missed being on stage and people saying, yeah, great guitar player. So I was missing that my ego being stroked. So I guess I've got a couple of things on YouTube <laughs> and it kind of started from there. But yeah, the point is, I didn't start, I didn't plan any of this. It's all just fun. I'm not trying to grow my channel particularly. It's all just, I have a terribly huge ego where I need it stroked constantly. <laughs> but no, it's just fun. So, but what I am, now here's the crux of it. What I am disciplined at is I'm good at learning from my hero, like we all are, whatever but then I'm really good at applying it to what I know. So what I know starts out there and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. For example, maybe we all start with our blues scale. But, so maybe I, I would learn Hideaway, which is kind of where it, much of it started for me by the Blues Breakers and, and Eric Clapton. And so I would learn um, And I'd think, but that doesn't fit. I can't, where is that in my blue skill, Dad? Because it was my dad I would ask. And he would say, now he's using a different, well, I don't know if he, I don't know if he said that. But anyway, the point is, we discovered, or I discovered, whatever, that it was the major scale. So now I've got to think, right, I learned Hideaway, so I satisfied that urge to learn Hideaway. But then I've got to think, how do I expand my thing? So I would think, so, yeah, I'm, so I'm playing that. Right, so I can play the moody stuff of the blues. I can go. Right, so I can mix the two of them. So that, I was good at that. I was good at learning that. So now I've got a blues scale and a, and a major scale. And, it, and so it went on and on and on. Another example, Tunnel of Love. Again, my guitar enjoyment started as a young boy learning lots of the alchemy stuff, Martin Offler. And so I would learn, um, you know, that Tunnel of Love solo that starts off, it's an outro. I think it's the outro solo that starts off really lovely and slow. That sound. That sort of thing. And then I would think, how does that sound so nice? He's hardly moving his fingers. And so I'd, I'd learn it again to satisfy that urge to learn Tunnel of Love. But then again, I think, so is he playing the blues scale? He kind of is and he kind of isn't. How is that possible then? Because one minute he's playing the sweet stuff and it's all very lovely, but the next minute you can play things like this. So how is he mixing the two? And of course, Martin Offer is the expert at letting the chords behind him do the work. So he can just sit there and do things like this. Here's a great example, watch this. Down to the relative minor. Five. I mean, that one note says it all. And so he'll just play major, and so I would learn to incorporate, so, right, so I can stay in one position and just let the chords do my work as long as I change a note here or there to reference the chord. So now I'm good at that. Then fast forward years and years and years of doing that, I would then look at Gary Moore. In fact, I think that's what I said in my email. Yeah, I went on to Gary Moore. How come Gary Moore's runs seem to be so much more sympathetic and melodic to see your average rocker. 
uh, I would discover that right, so he's every time there's a five chord he's coming down these sort of uh, or these semitones that I wouldn't come down so how's that, so what's he doing? there's my blues he's going So I'd learn that. So now I've got that in my blue. And so I'm just really good at incorporating, satisfying the urge to learn the song that I want to learn. And then do not, this is where I'm not lazy. I go back and think, right, how am I getting that into my repertoire? And so slowly over the years, my blue scale starts to become sophisticated. another thing I said next thing is what did I say other tips oh yeah I guess a huge one is learning to run up and down the diminished scale because it's incredibly useful get very familiar with that and learn to increase your speed by finding your favorite places to play it so that's another thing I would do and um, so learn <laughs> find out where the pockets are. A classic example of what I'm talking about is the other day I learned a Tobias Hoffman thing who uses diminished all the time and he's found he's got, he's got his little pockets like he'll go well here's what he did and I learned it to satisfy the urge to learn that particular thing he was doing but then I've gone back so now I've got an extra bolt onto my blue scale for example. Now I'm on the five just learn it learn that thing I've now learned it and I've stuck it in so now I'm going to do that regularly into my blues so now I can fire up my blues scale and when I get to the five either go or and, and get all of that in so I'm just really good at learning my song, satisfying that urge to do that, and then sticking it in my, my blues scale. Right, so I hope I just didn't babble a lot of crap there. Got a bit enthusiastic, didn't I? Um, other things I practice, I do like to run up and down my half step, whole step scale, just as, just as a kind of discipline. favorite little licks I like to practice here's one I like to practice that and uh, as you know from the last lesson licks like that just to keep my fingers moving so that that's how I expand right I'm going to go now and have a kombucha so I'm going to sign off with some nonsense thank you for joining me